What's up guys? I'm Josh from Rice Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. It is time. We are firing up the One Laser Hydra 9 tonight. We are going to show you the differences in engraving. Remember, this laser is equipped with two different tubes. We have a 100 watt CO2 glass tube, and then we also have a 38 watt RF tube in one machine. This opens up a ton of different options and a ton of different looks, speeds, etc. We're going to run through a lot of those different tests tonight and show you what it's all about. Let's get started. All right, as I said in the intro, we're going to talk about the different tubes that's inside this machine. First, you have the 100 watt CO2 glass tube that is very popular in the laser industry um, and various different wattages. Then you have the RF tube that's located on the side of the machine. Not as popular, it's, it's growing in the industry, but it's legit. Not gonna lie, I've tested it out. Um, now there are two different types of tubes. One is a liquid cooled CO2 glass tube. The other is an air cooled RF tube. 100 watt, 38 watt. I keep pointing because obviously the glass tube's in the back of the machine. The RF tube is located down here on the side. So the main differences between the two in easy terms is the RF tube can turn on and off a lot faster than the, uh, the glass tube, which allows it for high intricate detailed engravings at a lot higher speed. You can get those same details with the glass tube, but you're gonna have to go a lot slower in order to, for that tube to turn on and off to hit those details in the fine corners and stuff like that. Can't, the RF tube can cut stuff, but it's going to be a little bit slower. Now, the glass tube is a workhorse. It can cut stuff and also engrave. But like I said, you'll have to go a little bit slower um, to get those details that you would want. Now, the ideal situation on how you should use the Hydra 9 with both laser sources, say you have a job that has engraving and cutting. What you would do is you want to engrave with the RF, get those high details at a high speed, saving you time, and then cut it out with the glass tube. Today in the video, we're going to go more over the engraving portion, but towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you how it does some magic tricks back here, switches the mirrors around in order to use both tubes in one job. I can't show you still, if you watch my first video, I can't show you the the mechanics behind how it works back here yet because patents are still pending, but uh, we will show you how it works inside the machine. All right, so now we're in here in the machine. Now, the test we're gonna run today is I'm gonna run the glass versions up here of engraving and the RF tube down here. We're gonna run everything for now at 1200 millimeters a second. Now what this should prove is that the, at 1200 millimeters a second, the glass CO2 tube should lack in details compared to the RF tube. We're going to run three with the glass, three with the RF. Uh, we're going to start at 1200, at 10%, 15%, and 20% for the 100 watt CO2 glass tube. RF tube, we're going to go 20%, 40%, and 60% um, just to compensate for the differences in wattage. Also, what I forgot to mention, is the glass tube has a larger dot size, a beam size, than the RF tube. Therefore, to kind of compare the two, I'm running the glass tube at 0.08 line spacing, and I'm running the RF tube at 0.08, uh, sorry, 0.05 line spacing. Kind of equal them out a little bit. I think that's the best way we can compare them um, and still make them equal. Kind of like, not really apples to apples, but like apples to plums. So let's start, I'll show you where first we're gonna do the glass tube and then the RF tube. All right, so now we're just gonna autofocus. Goes down, plums. Comes back, let's get it moved over just a little bit more. All right, let's start.
Okay, so taking a closer look at these, this is the 10% one. Not bad detail, it just seems a little dull around the edges. Move over to the 15%, a lot better. You're starting to see a lot more of the details in the golf ball. Sorry. A lot more details in the golf ball and also the hair on the, the bear's uh, arm there. Move over to the 20%. A lot darker, a lot more crisp edges as far as the engraving is. Um, you can start to see more of the grass clippings. Um, but overall, this is with a minimal, minimal air. So stock air assist. Now let's check out the RF. All right, so let's take a closer look at the results. Up top here is the glass, 10%, 15%, 20%. 15 15% probably looks pretty dang good. Still a lot of detail in the, uh, the grass down there, in the golf ball. But compared to the RF tube, Huge difference. I mean, just look at the details in the ears, the golf club, the grass, the ball, compared to up here is a lot different. RF tube is definitely where to go for engraving. Big difference. Now I want to make it clear that you can get great results still with a glass tube. I mean, I've been doing it for years um, on, the, on the other machines that I have. It just takes a little bit more dialing in and obviously a lot slower. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to engrave one here. I've done some testing for the glass tube and I'm going to engrave one here for the RF tube that I think that I found so far is optimal settings that can get a, a nice darker engraving that I'd be happy with for a customer's order. Um, so I'm going to do the glass one first, and then we'll do an RF tube there. So this one was done at 300, at 10%, 0.08 line spacing. So 300, 10%, 0.08 line spacing. That should get you a, a decently dark uh, engraving, depending on, you know, everyone's style is different. Everyone's going for a different look. So depending on your project. So let's go down and hit up the RF version. Give it a little wipe off. This one was done at 800, at 80%. Point oh five line spacing. Now, one thing about the RF tubes, you can run them a lot higher without, uh, they're un different than the like glass tubes where you should, you know, to save life, run it at a, you know, 
a decent wattage, oh, sorry, a decent percentage. Uh, RF tubes, you cut it 99%. So you can run the RF tubes a lot higher percentage um, to get the look you're going for without, with minimal consequences. So. Okay, so now taking a look at the ideal settings, instantly on the RF tube, you can see it's a lot darker. I'm going for a closer look here. Oh, tons of detail. compared to the other ones that still look good but looking at the co2 versions sorry the glass tube versions just a lot different look and like i said you could dial these in a lot better with a lot more tinkering um you know i've been doing this for many years and i'm still tinkering around with settings and stuff like that on all my machines so it just takes time and if you're not tinkering you're not being efficient you can gain, gain efficiency by tinkering around. So ideally, this would be a, a great engraving option. 800 at 80% .05 line spacing. All right, so now I got another blank piece of wood here in the laser. Now I'm gonna show you how to use both laser tubes in one single job. I'm gonna take you over to Lightburn and show you how it's done. All right guys, got you over in Lightburn now. I just have this text one laser right here. We're going to engrave the one laser text with the RF tube, followed up by the glass tube, 100 watt, cutting out the outside perimeter. How I have it set up in settings, I have it with our ideal settings that we just did on the, on the bear with the golf club. 800 speed, 10% power, 0.05 line spacing, set to laser two, right there. Now, if I switch over to the red, the cut, we're going to go at 40, at 30%. 40 speed, 30% power on laser one. All right, let's take you over there. Okay, so we're in the laser now. Everything's set up. What to expect? Once I press go, there's going to be a slight delay. It's going to be switching the laser tubes around. It's going to engrave first using the RF tube. Slight delay, the 100 watt glass tube will kick in, cut out the perimeter. Let's get started. Okay, well that was an epic fail. I didn't have the engrave layer selected. Sit tight. There you go. Little job using both laser tubes. Pretty slick. And the delay is not even that bad. All right, guys, there you have it. The Hydra 9 by one laser. Two laser sources in one machine. I'm super impressed. Awesome setup. Easy to use to switch back and forth between the two different laser sources. If you have any questions, comments, make sure to comment below. Also, like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by. We're about a week out from Christmas, so I wish you guys and your family a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.